and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I quickly had to be on a 10 minute call with my sisters because we have to talk about the gag at the end, guys. They are upset with Connor. I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed it. Guys, I will, ooh, I will, they're gonna be so annoyed with me, but I, it is what it is. But guys, before I get into this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You already know, road to 30K. All right, guys, this, this episode was definitely more interesting than the last one, and I think he's, let me not try to make it too long-winded. Okay, the bombshell date. So we have Jesse. she went on a date with Joey, and Jess went on a date with Trey. Jess. She lays it on factor 50. The way she flirts is quite aggressive in my personal opinion. Like, oh, I want you. Girl, what's the man's last name? How old is he? You said you wanted him before you found out what his age was, what his occupation was. It's too much, it's too much. Like, just rest, just rest, just rest, just rest, just rest. And then he was like saying that he likes brunettes with big boobs and nice lips. And I'm glad she at least checked on the breast thing because she got her boobs done and of course, why would you not want to get a compliment on those since you got them done? So I'm, I'm happy for her. Then Harriet and Grace and Matilda are having a conversation and thankfully none of them care about the results of the heart racing challenge, which is good. Let's not, let's not. It's, it's, it's low hanging fruit, it's boring, next. Kieran and Ronnie are having a conversation and Kieran is definitely tired of Nicole constantly being upset with him about things that she don't need to be upset with him by. But he's not really doing anything really about it. He's just always, when she gets upset, he's always like comforting her and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that's not what a boyfriend or someone that you're interested in is not supposed to be doing. But at this point, it's annoying. It's annoying because him and Nicole end up having a conversation and, um, no, no, you know what, I'll leave that in it for a bit. Nicole's speaking to the girls and she's talking about how she feels knocked down, down by the situation and she feels like he, he finds uh, Grace more attractive. For me, Nicole is extremely insecure. Now, while I have a bit of sympathy for her, not enough for me to be irritated by what she's doing because yes, you're insecure, but that's got nothing to do with Kieran. That ain't got nothing to do with Grace. That's only got to do with how you see yourself or the, your past experience of being cheated on or whatever, whatever, whatever. But you're making it Kieran's problem and it's not. He didn't cause the problem, so he shouldn't fix the problem. I'm sorry, people coming in with all these all this baggage, all these broken open wounds and stuff like that, it's not attractive. For me, this was the outside world and a man was doing all this, I'm, I'm gonna leave, I'm sorry. And it's not like, oh, I'm not tough, I, I leave when it go and gets tough. I don't, I don't need to be there. Because I'm not coming with all this baggage. I don't want you to come with all this baggage. You know what I mean? And the thing is, unless you go, you're going through therapy or anything like that, I, I, don't, you, you don't pay me. Yeah? Therapists get paid. Yeah? You know, you know I pay my bills. My rent is expensive. Are you paying my bills? Are you paying the telephone bill? Are you paying the LMO bill? No. So, I, it's just too much. Like, it's too much. And it, for me, it makes her look unattractive the insecurity because there's always problem and if there's always gonna be problem and you're never gonna have peace why would i pick that relationship why would anybody pick that relationship but yeah this issue that she's having is all about her and nothing about kieran then we go back to the dates trey we like it he's got a good job why jess is impressed that the man went to uni is a shame guys it's a shame because in this country um so for my uh, my international subscribers in this country, the government will give you a loan to go to uni. Any and everybody, if I'm not mistaken, can get a loan. So why is she so surprised that a man goes to uni? What type of men does she date? I'm not saying that everyone has to go to uni now because I've definitely dated people that haven't been to uni. But why are you impressed? Ain't that just the bet? But most people go to uni. It's not a big deal, but I guess she didn't. Um, I guess she didn't. Of course, she called herself the bride because Jess can, can never, never help herself. Great, no great. Jess can never, never help herself, and she always has to mention that she's the prize. You're not, but okay. And I think her keep on mentioning that's how she gets her confidence. That's how she, that's how she feels herself. That's that's. I feel like that's how she gets herself going because the one thing that girl ain't shy of is confidence, or at least pretending to be confident. She ain't shy of that at all, at all, at all. Joey um, is saying that him and Grace are open now. For me, even though they haven't had that conversation via their conduct they're not really open in my personal opinion but okay and joey and jesse seem to be interested in each other and he seems like he's having a good time talking about oh she's trouble and da -da -da -da. i don't even know how she's trouble because i didn't see anything from that date that would lead me to believe that 
there's trouble or that she's a threat to Grace or any, um, I didn't see it. Maybe they didn't show it, but I really did not see it. So then we go on to Nicole and Kieran having a conversation and the way in which she's forcing him to say, like she wants, she almost wants him to say, I find Grace more attractive than you, which is an odd comment because he's with you. If he wanted to go and pursue Grace when she first dropped in the villa, he could have went to go do that. He didn't. So why you want to force him to basically admit, so what, you feel right? Do you want to be right about that? Imagine you want to be right about something like that. It doesn't make sense. And Nicole needs to go, where? In the bin. Because it is. this is nonsensical, guys. This is really, really extremely nonsensical. This man has been with you pretty much since day one. And because the presence of a girl is in the villa, you're so, you're so stressed. You're so pressed. It's crazy. Honestly, guys, it's too much. It's too much. And yeah, like I said, he's very unattractive. She ends up starts to cry. But again, yes, although it's sad that she's insecure, I really don't care. At this point, the way in which she picks these arguments with him, it makes me feel like, is it a kink? Because it, I don't understand why she keeps on doing it. Like, there's an ulterior motive here, or she's just extremely insecure. It could be, it could be either or, or a mixture of a child, I don't know. But for me, it's very, very draining. And I'm actually hoping that Kieran does a madness in Castle more. I won't even drag him for doing a madness. I, guys, I will not drag that man if he does a madness in Castle more because this right here is draining. It's draining to watch, so it's, I can imagine it's draining to be in. Moving on, the bombshells return back to the villa. The girls were speaking about the date um, amongst themselves. Okay, like I said earlier on, Trey said he likes girls with nice lips, big boobs, and that are brunettes. Why did Jess go and relate to the girl that the girls that he said he likes girls with big lips, not nice lips, big lips? One, he did not say that. So Jess always stays lying. This girl loves to lie, guys. Ah! I don't understand why she's always in or like she inflates the truth. I don't know if it's intentional or unintentional, but the girl always gets facts wrong. And then secondly, for her to say I got he said I got um he like said he likes girls with big lips and you said tick. Just needs to go where? In the bin. Because if she has big lips, only God knows what I have. Now guys don't even think you could try to play with me and tell me what I have because you'll get blocked if you try to say something slickish. Yeah. But um, let me know. guys, I'm playing with you. But she don't have big lips. She has maybe for she has big lips. Yeah, I can't really talk on that one. But if we're talking about big lips in general, she, she has average. And the, the average is nice. But it's not big. I don't think by any definition. Um, is big. It's just lips. You know what I mean? Because if that's big, what, what what's the average for? Be but again, that's not my problem. That's not my conversation to have. I'm not gonna even be trying to find out what that's about. I'm gonna ignore it and move on. Also, Jesse ends up saying to the girls that when she was speaking to Joey, Joey never indicated that they that Grace and him were closed off. But on top of it. He doesn't really know where they stand. Of course, Grace gets annoyed because what do you mean you don't know where we stand? Like, what do, from day one, you're talking about, I miss you, I miss those lips. Y'all kissing bed, y'all doing definitely doing bits in bed and all that type of stuff, but you don't know where she stands. When she's gotten to know nobody else other than you. Okay, so she's definitely confused by the whole um, situation. Um, but then again, again, even though I want to sympathize with Grace, I just remember Samantha. I just remember the smiling that she was doing, guys. So then when I want to, I just remember, oh, maybe not. Maybe with some time passes, I'll forget. But for right now, I'm just like, oh, Samantha. I know Samantha, Samantha had a good night tonight. I know she's kiki kaka and all her teeth are showing. She's, she's having her best key right now. I know she is. Then the guys are also speaking about the day. Joby is saying that he has chemistry with Jess. Like, chemistry like no other. Like, chemistry strong. Guys, the date was 20 minutes. How much can you find out about somebody in 20 minutes? He's known Grace for over a year now. For over a year now. And he's talking about what he found out about this girl in 20... And I'm just going to call her this girl for the... Sorry, I am. Um, uh, let, let me give her her name. Sorry. Uh, Jesse. What he found out about Jesse in 20 minutes is more than what he knows about Grace for a whole year. But if we're just going to talk about the villa for the time that they've been in the villa, which is at least two weeks together. Are you being so, are you being so for real? You, you can't, you actually can't be serious. Joey can't be serious. For me, he just wants trouble because 
Even though the date was 20 minutes long, we saw about three minutes of it, and none of that gave me anything. None of that gave me anything. You said you learned something, you said it was so deep. Please elaborate further, because you're just saying words, but I'm not getting the conclusion of what you're saying. He, for me, he just sounds stupid. And I definitely think he's playing a game, for sure, for sure, for sure. Him and Grace were in the bottom, maybe he's thinking that I'm Joey Essex, I don't belong in the bottom, it must be Grace that is bringing down my, um, Currency. So let me maybe chat our slide over to somebody else. Maybe that's what he's thinking. I don't know. Joey is now saying that something is missing. So because this um, Jesse has come into the villa, now you've identified that something is missing between you and Grace. Come again. Honestly, guys, one thing a man will do is actually just useless to you. Some men, let me just caveat that before y'all start talking. But that's just it's just it's, it's just within some men's capability. Just to come over and embarrass you for no reason. Just to embarrass you for free. Like you're an enemy of them. Hmm. It's scary out there, guys. It really, really is scary out there. Um, so, moving on. Grace and Harry are speaking. Grace is fuming, of course. And I understand why she's upset. And she was saying that his energy was super low and super down. And he came back from the date. So, it wasn't like they could just get back into things. And it was just a date that he went on. He made it seem more of a thing than maybe Grace thought it needed to be. Then Joey and Will were having a conversation and um, again, Joey's always passing responsibility over to somebody else. He said, how Grace reacts to this whole situation with De Jesse will be telling. As if to be like, if she's upset, which she has the right to be, that she, he's gonna look at her in a negative way or that's gonna bring down her stock in his eyes. Like just saying the most outlandish and ridiculous things. Um, but Harriet clocked him. Harriet clocked him good. She was like, uh, what about when he was speaking to Omar? And uh, what about when he was talking about Connor? He was, guys, he was ready to square up with Omar because the way in which he tried to bark, yeah, and come into his face and enter his privacy, yeah, because of flirting with Grace. But now, what, two, three days later? Now you're saying something different. Now you want to get to know somebody. And then when Connor got picked your um, picked Grace, you had an issue with that. And that was two days ago, one day ago. And then now you should be okay to get to know whoever you want to know. So again, Joey is acting. And he's definitely showing his 13 years on reality TV show. He's definitely, definitely, definitely showing that. If the producers paid him, he's de they're definitely going to get their worth from him because I don't even understand this behavior. I don't even understand this hypocrisy because it's almost like when somebody wants grace then he wants grace. But when nobody wants grace, cause all of them men have either been sent home or you know what I mean? The attraction has been cut off or whatever. Blo roadblocks have been put up. Now all of a sudden, you know, he could be attracted to somebody else and he's going on like, oh, it's just, I have to get to know her. Like, it would be a disservice to me. I'm just confused on what this man is. Wait, wait, what, what he's saying and where he's going. And Joey needs to go where? In the bin. Because it's actually just trash across the board. Joey and Grace are end up having a conversation and he's saying his feelings for her haven't changed. However, he wants to go get to know Jesse and that she should still trust him. Only an idiot would trust him. And that's the same game he tried to pull up, or he did pull on Samantha. That's what, that's the same type of game he tried to pull on her. He was, again, the way he was saying it was like something had happened, but nothing had happened. So it was like, you're saying it's not that deep, but in the way in which you're saying it, you're making it seem like it's that deep. And um, he was saying it would be silly to be closed off. What do you think you guys have been working towards? You guys have known each other from the, from the outside the villa from like a year ago. You guys are not starting from scratch. So the fact that you're thinking it would be silly to be closed off is actually silly. And again, I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie, big up Grace for even standing up for herself, standing on big business and bringing receipts. She was like, you've said the relationship is special. You said you've been so glad to rekindle it. And then now you're acting like this don't mean anything to you and that. It's, it's not that serious, but you saying it's special and wanting to rekindle stuff definitely gives the impression that we're on the same page and we, we, we're heading in the same direction. We have a chance to do a redo of a situation that's happened before and you ain't going to take the opportunity to make it right? It's not making sense, guys. It's not at all. Then Grace said she's not trying to be in a triangle because for what? Like, the boy was really hers and then now he's trying to, he's trying to run now, guys. It's crazy. 
And then thankfully, like I said, she brings up Omar now to his face. So I love that. And he was like, oh no, that was different. That was behind my back. Come again. So they're supposed to have conversations when you're there. Any single time she has a conversation with another guy, you want to sit there, you want to write the minutes, you want to take notes of uh, what was said in the conversation. I'm confused. Um, and then he said that, yeah, if, if guys tried to go after you, I would be chilled. Based on the history, no, you would not. That's an out, that's an outright lie. No, you would not. No, you would not. So I'm glad she's still on big business, but at the same time, I know she's gonna go back, but for right now, she, she you know, she said what she needed to say, and she was definitely, oh, I definitely heard her. Now, Joey and Jesse have a conversation. He says that him and Grace are close, but not closed off. As he keeps on repeating, Grace is speaking to the girls, and she's saying this is basically what happened on the outside. So when she was saying that it was work commitments and stuff. When I said it was it was a lie because Joey done said something else initially, there you go. So she was saying that he basically ghosted her, that they were going strong, then he kind of fizzled out, his energy was low, and then they kind of broke up over the phone, which is odd. And he was just saying that he wasn't interested and that he doesn't like he can't give her what she wants. And it was just very matter of fact and rude and blunt. So it's like this guy's already like showed you that he doesn't treat you with kid gloves, or not even with kid gloves, with respect, it's not even kid gloves, it's with respect, so you bringing him back only a couple months later, even though he's making it seem like he's a changed man, that man is not changed, how much can you change in a couple months, especially you're going on Love Island, do you think the man's really going to change, be so for real, be so for real, but yeah, she definitely still wants him back, but we'll see, I think Grace may potentially focus more on Jesse. I hope not. For right now, she's definitely focused on Joey, but she's looking at Jesse as well and making little comments. Do I care? No, but that's just the case. Um, so then Nicole and Kieran have a conversation and for some reason they say, if we kiss other people, it's not that deep. Uh, interesting conversation. Anyway, they get, uh, then these people start playing a game of never have I ever. Connor, they will say never have I ever had intimacy outside. Connor said he had it in the cave, lad, and then Joey was naming all the places he'd done, didn't he? We didn't, we only asked for one example. We didn't ask for all the examples, but okay. Uh, he's, he's doing it in a car outside. Do you park your car inside your house? Because in the UK, a lot of us don't have garages, guys. We don't. So, of course, in a car. Like, if it was a car parked in the garage, you would just go upstairs. But in, on, in a car on the street, of course, that's outside. But, again, he's ditzy act. He loves doing that. And I guess some people like seeing it. Cool. Connor, Kieran, and Trey have all slept with women old 20 years older than older than um, 20 years their senior which is scary connor said when he was 18 years old he he was intimate with someone that was 28 years old guys we need to find out when i lock her up i know the age of consent in the uk is 16 but we need to lock her up we need to lock that woman up guys in some rare cases she could be his grandma now of course we don't we don't wish that because there's a 30 year gap, but if, you know what I mean, if, if the grandma had him at 15, and had another child at 15, you got, you wouldn't have to be that man, that son's grandma in some unconventional ways. But at least his mama, like, like I think, am I 30 years away from my mom? Let me see. No, I'm less than 30, I'm not doing the maths, I know my mom, my mom, I'm literally, my mom's 30, the gap between my mom and I is less than 30 years. This one is 30, what are you doing? Scary, I don't know, honestly, what do you and an 18 year, like, I wouldn't even date someone that's 18. So what would you have in conversation, what would you have in common in conversation for someone that is just come of age? Guys, it's scary outside, honestly. That woman right there, she needs to get flogged, okay? Um, and we need to check up on Connor, because, um, not Connor, Kieran, because things are looking scary, yes? Things are definitely looking scary. Kira was getting a bit, I guess a tad bit irritated because I guess people were laughing and doing too much and he was like, guys, don't do too much knowing that Nicole's going to be upset about stuff. So I think he was definitely starting to get annoyed with the situation. Um, then they came to the question about um, never have I ever been two-faced. Nobody drinks at first. I'm thinking, oh, y'all need to drink. Well, most of y'all need to drink. Let me not do that. Mimi ain't been two-faced. Connor ain't been two-faced. Um, you ain't been two-faced. Um, I don't really think... Uma has been two-faced, not from my recollection. Everybody else might have been. Just that's just off me thinking quickly off my feet. 
the rest of them might have been. Anyways, nobody drinks, which is BS. And then Jess drinks, Kieran drinks, and then Ronnie drinks. Jess says, yeah, it could probably be perceived as two-faced, but I say it to their face, so it is what it is. And she was like, if they don't like it, they can suck a big one. They can suck a big one. All right, Jess, you carry on. Honestly, you carry on with this energy. Honestly, oh, Lord, this girl's energy is crazy. Ronnie said um, something like, I don't even know what Ronnie really said. He said something about being, he said that he's been in the best triangles or something like that. I don't, I don't know, something like that. Anyways, Jess was laughing, because I guess Harriet has been in both of those triangles, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, with Tiffany and with, um, with Tiffany and with Jess. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then Kieran comes up. Now, Car like, guys, I, I didn't know Kieran was about to do his big one right now. So Kieran was like, yeah, some people make comments and like say, they say nasty comments and then they act nice to your face. And then he was like, yeah, let me just name and shame Miss Harry. And I was like, oh, what did Harry do? So then he said that, oh yeah, you would say to Nicole nasty things about me. Like, oh, he's no good for you. And then you would say, oh, they're, they're a great couple. And he was like, that's, you know what I mean? That's two-faced. Now, did he answer the question? No, because it's drink. Never have I ever been two-faced. They talk about I, not somebody else, but he wanted to do his big one in this moment. And I guess he, he did do it. So I was like, oh, okay, he clocked her. Okay, okay, not, again, no, I don't, let me not say he clocked her because realistically speaking, they all talk about each other. So I don't think it's a big enough deal. And I don't think Harriet would have said anything more than any of the other girls. Let's, if I'm, if I'm going to be unbiased for a second and keep it a bark, everybody chats, uh, everybody's business. Let's keep, uh, let's, let's keep it real. And it definitely isn't just Harriet that talks about Kieran because Nicole talks to all the girls about Kieran and when he messes up in her eyes. So maybe Harriet was wrongly targeted. I don't know why, but let's get into it. And Harriet was saying something like, oh, you're so childish. Oh, next. Now, I'm not going to lie. Kieran was feeling some type of way about her comments. He felt some type of way. And then he was like, oh, at least um, I haven't been second best. You know, he said, at least I haven't been second choice like three times. And I was like, oh, guys, he gagged her something serious. I said, oh. You know, I guess you know, when I was saying that in, during the whole rate challenge, I wanted to react. Yeah, I reacted. I was like, oh, I swear, God, I was so dramatic. I was like, he, he, what did he say? He said, what? Oh, baby. I was like, yee. Now, did the punishment fit the crime? You no, know, it did not. But I think he felt some type of way about um, Harriet calling him immature. So he was like, oh, you finna do me? Oh, I'm finna do you. I'm finna do you. And, and he did her now. Oof. Guys, he did her. Um, and my sister was like, no, it was only two. I think he actually might have been three. He, I think, didn't, didn't he, him and, so Ronnie and Harriet actually tried to give it a go initially. I believe those two were initial couple. And then she was in a triangle with Ron and Jesse, Jess, sorry, and then Ron and Tiffany. So he has, she has been like second best like three times. I'm just saying factually he might have been right about that now. Then um, Matilda is so messy. She was like, Harry, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear what he said? Yeah. Kira said, I'm big on bold and repeated it. So then, of course, she started getting upset because he really did gag her. Um, Jess was like laughing, having the best time of her life. She was saying that if you're going to give it, then you got to get it. Now, I don't want to agree with Jess at all because I just don't want to. But I think Kieran definitely felt sometimes, even though, okay, Kieran did call Harriet out first, but I definitely think he felt somewhat small or embarrassed by her basically saying that you're childish and basically just to shut up and pack it in. Um, so, yeah, he said, oh, you want to do your big one? I'm going to do my biggest one. So, yeah. And then she and Harriet ended up saying, F you, Kieran. And he was like, you wish. And I was like, ugh. Not again, guys. Not again. Then she started crying. I hear her. I hear her because she was embarrassed. And, and I, you know what? That's the, I'm not gonna lie. Even though, okay, objectively, Kira did too much. Did he gag her? Yes. Objectively, that's the, that's the truth, guys. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna lie. We're not gonna lie on this channel. I don't care. We're not gonna lie on this channel. And I think I've seen. I keep on seeing a, a, a theme with Harriet. When she wants to do her big one, she's not built for it. So when she did her big one with, was it Kieran initially? I don't know. When she did her big one with Robert, I think it was Kieran initially. Then she cried after. Remember then they were like, oh, Patsy said that, they were accusing Patsy for encouraging her of, of doing that. 
She did her big one there. She cried after that. She did her big one with Ronnie. She cried after that. She did her big one here with Kieran again. And then she cried after that. So for me, I think she should just be who she is and stop, instead of trying to be big and boldy because a lot of people are bigger than her and will yibber and yabber and drag her more than she can because she's not built like that. She's not built for the reeds. She ain't got thicker skin. The heat, you get too hot in the kitchen for her. So if I was her, I'll stop doing that because she keeps on being upset because people are going to gag her more than she's going to gag them. It's the truth. And let's even be honest, guys, if we're going to get a bit deeper into this, the reason why Kieran is so mad, it's not even at Harry, it's at Nicole. Because let's even say Harry is talking ish about Kieran. Where did, he, where did she get where did she get the ish from? Kieran, she got it from Nicole. Nicole's chatting ish. You should have called her two-faced because she'd be talking about you. Harry is not saying uh, negative things about you out of the blue. Plus, every girl is comforting Nicole and might say something negative about you. It is what it is. It is what it is. Y'all, you guys talk. Them girls talk. Why is Harriet special when Jess would have said something? Jess has definitely said. Jess has definitely said negative things about Kieran. Other girls would have. So I don't know why Harriet is special because Harriet is not special at all in this situation. But again, like I said, he gagged her something serious. He dragged her something serious. Of course, he's gonna apologize tomorrow because. He did, he did, he did a lot, he did a lot, but yeah, that was epic. I saw people on Twitter comparing him to Scott. Remember the time when Scott said to Leah, oh, now you want to pipe up. You've been here four weeks and now you want to speak up. Ooh, another gag. Oof, another gag. Yeah, it was a lot. Guys, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. But guys, thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And that's my next video. Bye.